A few years ago, I did a mini series ranking every Electronic Arts Sega Genesis game, and I thought I'd put them all together into a marathon collection where you can view them all at once. It's been a few years, and you know some people may have not known that Electronic Arts published 108 games for the Sega Genesis, and I had a lot of fun covering them. I'm not done doing my ranking videos, I plan to do more, but I hope you enjoy this marathon collection. So sit back, relax, here we go. Electronic Arts was a huge supporter of the Sega Genesis, and in today's video, I'm taking a look at the first two years of games that they published from 1990 to 91 on the Sega Genesis. I have another ranking video, and a lot of people have been wanting me to cover Electronic Arts. Well, how do I do such a large game company justice? So what I've done is I'm breaking down their huge library into years, and in today's video, I'm looking at the first 27 games that they published from 1990 to 91 on the Sega Genesis and I'm having a lot of fun doing these. If you want to rank it yourself, there will be a link below, as well as a link to my other ranking videos. I've done over 30 of them, and this has been a great pleasure of mine to share with you these wonderful games. So, you may have your favorites. Sit back and relax. Here we go. EA ported a lot of Amiga and classic computer games to the Sega Genesis, and this is one of the better ones. This is Battle Squadron. I really like this top-down vertical shooter. And this is one of the early releases in the cardboard boxes. It's kind of hard to find in good condition. It's also got a two-player mode and branching paths. This is a B for me. Another early cardboard release from EA for the Genesis, and this is Blockout. And the comparisons to kind of like a 3D Tetris clone are here. It does have some two-player options. There's many different combinations you can do. I found this perspective to be a little confusing. I prefer classics such as Columns over this. But if you're looking for a new puzzle game, check this one out. While a little dated, this is an amazing tactical RPG. Buck Rogers Countdown to Doomsday is a solid experience on the Sega Genesis. If you're a fan of Buck Rogers, multiple races, professions, and skills that you can customize in this game. There's simply a ton of game here with many hours of gameplay and strategy. Highly recommend it. It's a total way for me. Budokan was ported to several platforms and this is the Sega Genesis version. And if you're into more traditional fighters, there's a lot to enjoy and experience here. I, for one, kind of grew up later with more modern fighters, so it was kind of difficult for me to go back to this one. It's just a C for me, but if you're more of a purist of traditional fighters, you may like this one more. A meaty strategy game for the Genesis, Centurion Defender of Rome has lots of content. Now, I like this one more than some. It is a little rough around the edges, but I did love the chariot races. Uh, it's got some cool animations, as well as a multitude of battles that you can do, naval and on foot. I think this game has a lot of charm and will have its fans. It's a B. Oh boy, Dark Castle. This game is truly terrible, and I know it was ported to several things, and the Genesis one is just not good. It's just terrible controls. It's too hard to maneuver and aim uh, uh, to hit enemies. Hit detection is truly awful. It's just not a fun experience. You know, I'm all about puzzle and adventure games, but this is a truly terrible experience. Total F. Flight games were all the buzz of the 90s and this is F-22 Interceptor and there's a lot of content in this game. If you're a fan of these types of games, you may like this more. Uh, I like more arcade action style games, but this one was a little bit easier to get into. I thought the graphics are very dated, but if you're into these classic flight games, you're gonna enjoy this one. This is a C. After seven, here's the rankings. Fatal Rewind, also known as the Killing Game Show on Amiga and Atari ST. This is a kind of a cool side-scroller. It is very difficult. I'm terrible at this game, but what I've played so far, I really enjoyed. And this is a game that I definitely would go back to. I like what they did here. It is rather difficult, but if you're up for the challenge, this is a B for me. 
James Pond is a cute platformer that might be better suited for children. I thought this was okay. I think the whole series is underrated and it was nice to go back and play the original. I don't think it's a bad platformer and it's a C for me. James Pond 2 improves upon the original and I like this one more. Uh, there's some different gameplay mechanics. You're, you're actually above ground now, not in the sea. And I like what they've done here with this game. It's got kind of a Christmas theme. You're in the North Pole. This is a B for me. I ranked the Madden football games in a previous video, but here's what I said about the two first releases on the Sega Genesis. Fairly limited to today's standards. It only had 17 teams. So even though it was lacking some features, uh, and, and it hasn't as aged as well as some of the others, it has that arcade feel. And I'm gonna give this a B. Next up is one of my all-time favorite football games, and that is John Madden 92. And this took the arcade gameplay of the first one, which was good, and made it a lot better with all 28 teams of the time. I love this game. I played this quite a bit back in the day. I still think it holds up. This is an S. There'll be a link in the description if you want to watch this entire video. King's Bounty is an absolute classic on the Sega Genesis, the precursor to Heroes of Might and Magic. I highly recommend going back and playing this game. It's a wonderful blend of action and strategy. As you're going around a kingdom, you're, you're, hi you're hiring troops, you're taking out enemies, you're discovering new areas. I absolutely love this game. Tons of strategy here and battles. And this is one of the best games on the Sega Genesis. A total S for me. Of EA's early sports releases on the Genesis, this is probably my least favorite. And it's not a bad game. I just think that there's other games on the Sega Genesis that are better basketball games. This one's a little dated, and I'm a huge fan of this uh, era of basketball players. Going back and revisiting this, this is just average for me. And here's the ranking of the first 14 so far. Here in the States, we got the inferior version of Marble Madness. Tengen actually made their own version, which is better than this. And I like this. Uh, I don't like it as much as the Nintendo Entertainment System version. Uh, it, there's nothing wrong with this game. It's just it's just overall just kind of average. I just The appeal of this version in particular is lacking for me. It's a C. Might and Magic. Gates to Another World has a ton of content if you're looking for more of a traditional RPG. Uh, there is a lot to like here. Now the graphics aren't going to blow you away, but there's over 250 types of weapons, 96 magic spells, and a guaranteed over 100 hours of adventuring. There is a lot to like here in this game. Battery backup. This is an A. Highly recommend it. It was fun to go back to the original NHL hockey and to see how well it stood up. I really enjoy this. It's probably my second favorite sports franchise that EA did, especially their early titles, right behind Madden. Now, this one's a little slow, but it does have 22 hockey teams, two all-star teams. Uh, I thought there was a lot in this game to like. Now, I prefer some other NHL versions over this, but this is a B. PGA Tour Golf set a standard on the Sega Genesis for golf games that many other games tried to compete with. Is this my favorite of them? No, but it's solid. There's lots to like here, including the gameplay. Real players and stats with battery backup. This is a B. Another solid computer port was Populous. Now, this is a game I rented quite a bit back in the day. I really enjoyed playing this game. There's so much content in this computer classic, and I think it does a decent job of taking the gameplay from the computer and porting it over to the Genesis. Now that controls a little clunky without a mouse, but I did enjoy playing this one. This is a B. Rings of Power was Naughty Dog's first console game, and this was specifically published by EA for the Sega Genesis, and this is a mixed bag for me. I just, uh, I, I think there's a lot of good ideas in this game that are poorly executed. Uh, you know, there's there's tons of 
traveling and different creatures and spells and items and lands, but I could never get into this game. This is a C for me. Another timeless classic that EA published was Road Rash, and this is an absolute blast. If you haven't played this series, it's great to go back to the original release on the Sega Genesis. Now, I have a lot more nostalgia for some other versions of this game, notably for the 3DO and Sega CD, but this is a great game and a lot of fun racing experience with uh, some non-traditional ways of winning by punching and kicking opponents, avoiding traffic. This is an absolute gem and a solid A for me. Highly recommend going back and playing this. And here's the rankings through the first 21 games. Shadow of the Beast is best played on an Amiga, plain and simple. Uh, I got to experience it as a kid and was just stunned by the artistic design of this game. Is it a perfect game? No. How does the Genesis port fare? It's good. It's a little bit too fast. I do believe there's another version of this game that was offered on the Mega Drive that slows it down and makes uh, uh, some of the hit detection a little bit better. But this is a good version of Shadow of the Beast and I highly recommend it. It's a B. Starflight started out as an IBM classic, and I'm so glad I got ported over to the Sega Genesis. This is a very, very meaty strategy RPG. You have to manage resources, hire personnel, travel the galaxy, huge map, tons of things to explore. It's impossible to cover everything in this game. An absolute gem, and this is an S. Sword of Sodan was a terrible port from the Amiga and just play the computer version instead. This doesn't work on a console. Oh boy, I can go off about how bad this game is. Clunky gameplay control, it's hard to turn around. Some people may say, hey, I like this game. I hate this game. I think it's terrible. It's a terrible home console port of the game, avoided at all costs. Total F, a turd of a game and one of the worst EA published. The fairy tale adventure was yet another Amiga port to the Genesis, and uh, you know, beside the clunky interface, I think this is a really solid RPG. I just don't think it works the best on the Sega Genesis. The more I played it, though, the more I did enjoy it. But you know, combat is rather challenging, and there's a ton to explore and enjoy in this game. If you can get past the interface, I think it is a solid RPG and a B for me. I really like this game and it's very difficult. I never was really great at playing it, but I appreciate going back and playing The Immortal. I think there's a lot here to like in this isometric action puzzle game. It's got some gruesome death scenes as well as some challenging puzzles to figure out. I highly recommend going back and playing the 16-bit classic and the Genesis port is well done. I think it's got great animation and sound. And look no further than this for a solid experience. This is an A. Rather uncommon original cardboard box game is Zany Golf. I wanted to really like this game more, but it has frustrating controls. I found myself not wanting to go back and play this. After revisiting it, it just, to me, the control kills it for this game. I think since then there's been better miniature golf games made and this is just average. This is just a C. So here's the final rankings. I want to hear your stories connected to these games. There were several classics that EA published and I want to hear your stories. Thank you so much for tuning in and stay tuned. This is just the first part of me covering Electronic Arts. Next up is the games they published in 1992. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. If you like what you see, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock. Let's keep it positive and you have a good day. When I think of one of the best publishers for the Sega Genesis, besides Sega, I think of Electronic Arts. And in today's video, I'm looking at all 20 games that Electronic Arts released in 1992. And what I'm doing is I'm taking this huge publisher and breaking it down by years. I did a previous video of 1990 and 91 games released by EA. And in today's video, it's a second part 
looking at the 20 games in 92 that they released. I'm having a lot of fun doing this and it's pretty neat to go back and to look at these games that EA released. Many of them are classics. I know you're gonna have your favorites. So in today's video, I'm gonna be looking at each game, showing you some gameplay footage and giving you a brief overview and letter grade. So sit back, relax. You may wanna grab some popcorn. Here we go. EA decided to take the James Pond franchise and make a mini game collection of sports games kind of tied it in loosely to the Barcelona games. They tried to be funny and said that James Pond was practicing for the Barcelona games. These mini games typically don't work. A lot of them aren't fun. I think this would be better served if you're playing multiplayer, but if you're uh, playing this game by yourself, I found the majority of the events boring. It's a D for me. Bulls versus Lakers in the NBA playoffs was a follow-up to Lakers versus Celtics. And I put this in the same category as the other one, even though it has new moves, it has 16 real teams, uh, there's real players in here. I just have a hard time with the choppiness and kind of the, the, the slow speed of this game. It tries to be a real basketball game with real moves and players, and you may like that. For me, I like a more of an arcade style, fast moving basketball game. It's a C for me. When I think of video game pinball, crew ball is one of my favorite classics. And I really enjoyed what they did with this game. Having the soundtrack of Motley Crue in the background rocking it. And you could tell that this was uh, produced and programmed by pinball experts. Uh, the fields are fun to play. It's got great momentum and physics. And I really like everything about this game. It's one of the better pinball games for the Sega Genesis. It's an A. When I think of some of the best games on the Sega Genesis, Desert Strike is in that conversation. This is a wonderful combination of kind of mission-based, isometric view, arcade action. Uh, you know, you're, you're controlling an attack chopper and you're going around blasting away foes and equipment with mission-based objectives. I really enjoyed everything about this game. It's not that long, 27 missions in total, but there's a ton to enjoy in this game. An absolute gem, one of the best EA made for the Sega Genesis, total S for me. One of several Amiga games to make it to the Sega Genesis, originally called Leander, it was called Galahad on the Sega Genesis. And this is a nice side-scrolling action platformer. Uh, it's got big, large sprites. I don't know what I think of the color palette as, you know, it, it is a little drab and it is a rather difficult game. If you can get past that challenge, you're in for a treat as I think this is a solid experience. The Amiga port is better, but this is a B. Here's a clip from a previous video in which I rank Madden 93 and Championship Edition. And that's John Madden Football 93. And, and so as time went on, they just kept adding more and more and more. And the big thing about this version is that it had a battery save backup. And so it has eight all-time Madden teams in it and has the famous coin toss as well as the introduction, even though it's kind of terrible in this, the Madden voice. And so I would say John Madden 93 is a perfect balance of arcade and sim. And so uh, there is a variation of this game. There's a EASN, EA Sports Network logo on one of these. And this is the first round, the first the limited edition. It doesn't mean it's worth anything, but anyways, there's this version of the game. And then they uh, they got sued, and it, well they they got sued and they settled out of court with ESPN, and then they changed it to this version of the game title, and so John Madden Football, and so both are fairly easy to find, but either way this is a great John Madden game, and it's one of my it's one of my favorite, and I'm going to give it a solid A. I think there's a lot to enjoy. There's lots of extras that they added in Madden '93. There is a rental exclusive and it is a lot more expensive because it is harder to find and there is some variations of it. This is one variation and that's John Madden Football Championship. So what they did is they took the engine from essentially John Madden 93 and did nothing but all 38 championship teams plus two all Madden teams. What's kind of cool about this game 
is that it's kind of timeless. You know, if you're a fan of a particular team, you're gonna you're gonna find a lot of great championship teams of all time. You know, what is your favorite championship team of all time? It's 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 probably gonna be on here. So, anyways. I love this version of the game. It is pretty tough. There is a variation of this game as well. It has a different uh, circle sticker there. And so I give this an A as well. I think this is great. It's perfect balance between arcade feel and sim. There's just and here's the ranking through the first seven EA games of 92. Oh boy. Jordan versus Bird one-on-one -on -one is a basketball game I don't think of ever playing when I want to have some fun. It's got three separate modes. I've never been a, a fan of this franchise, if I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I think it's lacking several elements that make it a competent basketball game. The control is really off. It's really awkward to do the three-point challenge with Larry Bird, one of my favorite basketball players of all time. And then it switches to the the dunk contest with jordan and i just think it's very frustrating to get it just right for dunks i was able to get some off but you know over and over again this was a terrible game overall i think it's missing i think it would be better served as an add-on to an additional basketball game avoid this garbage total f for me Flight Sim games on the Sega Genesis were a mixed bag, but LHX Attack Chopper was one of the better ones. Not my cup of tea, not a game I'm going to go back. I'm definitely going to prefer something like Desert Strike, which is a totally different type of game. What you get in this is 30 different missions. You can choose one of two different helicopters, uh, tons of armaments and missions, but I thought the graphics were rather drab. Uh, I thought it was okay, but for me, it's just a little tough on the eyes. If you're a Flight Sim fan, you may want to check this one out. I like it, but I don't love it, and so it's a C. Sometimes games have that just one more try to them, and that's what I think of Lotus Turbo Challenge. This is a good racing game. I know it's a computer port, and I really enjoyed what they did here. It's kind of Reminds me of kind of a classic rad racer. It's got the outrun vibe. Uh, there's debris and things in the roads you have to avoid. There's eight stages with 60 checkpoints. This is a rather challenging game, but I found myself wanting to play more and more to get to that next checkpoint. I like what they did here. It's a B. NHL PA Hockey 93 was an excellent follow up to the original. They added lots of different features in here, but when it comes down to it, I like it just as much as the original. Uh, it's good, it's not their best. And I know that a lot of people out there love 94, but 93 is good, it's not as good as 94 as it has uh, some less features but what they did in here they added instant replay there's 500 real players to choose from it might be your favorite it's a b for me i'm not a golf expert but pga tour golf 2 was recommended by several people saying it's one of the best golf games on the sega genesis and after playing it i agree it's a nice combination of of simple setup with good graphics and control. If you can get a non-golfer to like the game, you know you have a hit. I really like what they did in, in this version of PGA. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Even though I'm not the best golfer, uh, I have to give this an A because it was a lot of fun to play. I liked Populous and I played Power Monger on the Atari ST growing up. So what do I think of the Sega Genesis version? I really think it should have been compatible with the Sega Mouse and you know unfortunately this is just kind of a control nightmare. You know, it th there's a lot if you can get past the clunky control and menu as I didn't think this uh, setup was nearly as good as Populous or even the sequel. And so if you're a fan of those games, you may like this, but because of the clunky control setup, it's a D for me. Risky Woods is yet another classic computer port, and I didn't like this one as much as Galahad or some of the other ports that Electronic Arts published for the Genesis. It was a late 92 release, and this is relentless. There's tons of power-ups and different creatures. I, you know, there's a lot in here for people to like. If you like those classic 
computer ports from Amiga Atari ST. This one's just okay for me and it's a C. And here's the ranking after 14. Another hit for EA was Road Rash and they did a follow up with Road Rash 2, adding more options and levels. I think a lot of people didn't like the music in Road Rash 2, but easy, you can just turn it off and play your favorite soundtrack to your rock or whatever you like to listen to. Love what they did in this game. Absolutely a gem on EA. It's not perfect, but I really loved all the additional features that they added to this version, one or two players. It's a total A for me. Highly recommend the whole Road Rash series for the Genesis as it was one of EA's better series. Rolo to the Rescue is a fairly uncommon platformer, unfortunately, because it is one of the better ones for the Sega Genesis. I know a lot of people like this game. And there's a lot here, 60 different levels. There's power-ups. You can collect vacuum cleaners to unlock powers. And it's this kind of like a circus-themed game with a kind of a Mario World overview map. I liked what I played of this game. Highly recommend it. It's a B. Shadow of the Beast 2 is not a bad game. It's just not as stellar as the original that I played on Amiga. And so how is the Genesis port? It's good. It fixes some of the speed issues that the first one had, but it is brutally difficult and that's going to turn off some people. For me, uh, the sound wasn't as good. It's a solid platformer. Now, I like this game better than Risky Woods, and I would probably put it on par with Galahad. But, you know, for me, I'm going to play the original because of my happy memories I had with the original. Uh, but this is a solid experience, and this is a B. I was amazed watching the Dream Team back in 92, and so seeing team usa basketball i thought you know how can they capture that awesomeness of that original olympic team made up of professionals and it fails miserably this is no fun this is worse than the normal release such as bulls versus lakers you know team usa destroyed teams back then i'm sure they were trying to balance things out but teams that shouldn't be a challenge whatsoever are it takes all the fun away of the amazing basketball team that we had back in the day. Avoid this. This is a D. Where in Time is Carmen San Diego is an educational game. It came bundled with a desk encyclopedia. And, you know, a lot of people are going to have happy memories of playing this either at school or in an educational setting. You know, and that's what it is. It's an educational game. It's going to teach you about history and locations and if that's your thing then go for it uh, for me personally i don't have a problem with educational games i love awesomeness of games such as oregon trail but this is just okay for me and it's a c my thoughts stay the same with where in the world is carmen san diego now for some you're gonna love this game and you can learn a lot about locations and history. You're trying to take out Carmen San Diego and her henchmen. There's lots in this game if you like this type of game. For me, I would prefer to play an action game. And so this is a C for me as well. Here's the final ranking. There will be a link below for the part one of 1990 and 91 games that EA released. And I'm looking forward to doing many more of these. Thank you so much for coming to my channel and watching this video. If you're new, consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep positive. This is the immortal John Hancock. Thank you for watching and you have a good day. Electronic Arts was a huge publisher for the Sega Genesis and what I'm doing is taking this large publisher and breaking down their games published by year, talking about them, ranking them on my channel. The Immortal John Hancock here and I have a video covering all of EA games published for 1993. I personally have some favorites that I'm going to be talking about in this video. And what I'm doing is I'm taking their games and giving them a grade and giving a mini review and sharing gameplay footage of why I like or dislike these games. And so I've done several of these on my channel. If you want to 
review the playlist. The link is below where I've done several of these and have covered other years for EA. I'm going to be covering all of EA published games for the Sega Genesis eventually. This is the third one I've done. You're going to have your favorites. I definitely have mine. And I want you to sit back, relax. Hope you enjoy the video. First up is Bob, and this is an action platformer, in which you're a teenage robot, you crash your dad's vehicle, and you have to get through 45 different levels. I like this game, it is far from perfect, it is a little clunky on the gameplay, and a little slow, but I can forgive it because I think there's a great game hidden underneath some of the technical difficulties of this game. I think there's a lot to like, and I think you will like it as well. There's several different weapons and gadgets to get in the game. It's a B for me. If you're a college football fan, you may enjoy Bill Walsh College Football. This is the first one released on the Sega Genesis, and there is a lot of great things about this game. Tons of teams, 48 teams. Uh, it's got a great playlist. It does have kind of an arcade feel to the gameplay. Running's a little loose in it, but I think if you're a fan of college football, I prefer NFL football. It also has four player support. People are gonna enjoy that. It does have passing windows. Some people don't like that, but it's still B for me. EA was hitting its stride with Blades of Vengeance, and this is not a computer port made specifically for the Sega Genesis. Take one of three fantasy characters going through various action platform levels. Lots like here, there's different items and magic to utilize, very difficult game, but that two player option and the graphics and gameplay are excellent. This is an overlooked game that is an awesome option for people that may want to try something different than Golden Axe. Check it out, it's an A. Bulls versus Blazers and the NBA playoffs continues the evolution of this series, a series that I just really struggle to get into. There's 16 different playoff teams here, including the all-star teams, new moves, you know, and it advertises all sorts of updates from the previous versions of this game, but to me, it's still slow and chunky uh, gameplay. Some people may really enjoy this game. For me, it's just average. I really struggle to get into this game as I'm a fan of like NBA Jam and NBA Jam Tournament Edition games, especially for 16-bit. It's a C. Another exclusive flight sim, and this is F-117 Nightstorm. And this has uh, some options of arcade and campaigns. You can set the difficulty. Another game hampered by bad frame rate and slow gameplay. If you can get past that and you like more of a sim flight game, you may want to check this out. Me personally, I would rather play a game that runs a little bit better. This definitely has not aged well and it's a C. EA's first Genesis game came out in stride and that's FIFA International Soccer. It has a multitude of options seen in other sports games EA did and this is a great soccer simulator there's lots to enjoy here many different teams and moves the sound effects are above average i think for the first one that they made this is an excellent option really like that four player support i found myself getting into this haven't played in quite a bit a good soccer option for the sega genesis and this is a b and here are the rankings through the first six today if you're looking for a multiplayer strategy game, look no further than General Chaos. And this is a comical take on a battlefield scenario. Four squads to choose from that specialize in different weapons. And there is a lot to like if you like these types of games. Now I played this back in the day. It definitely was advertising that EA four player adapter, which makes this game a lot better. I think that this game is going to be most appreciated with four players playing against each other. I found the computer to be fairly cheap, but this is still an excellent game, and it's an A. Another really creative game that EA published was Haunting, starring Guy, and I really enjoy this game. This is a Halloween favorite as well. And essentially, you're trying to scare a family out of its house by possessing different 
items of furniture in this house and you're trying to go after each family member that has awesome animations and uh, when you run out of ectoplasm you have to go to these like dungeon levels and replenish your meter so that you can continue to scare the family members this is an excellent game and an a james pond 3 is a huge puzzle platformer and there is a ton of game here over a hundred levels and this one plays differently than the previous two. Some may like or dislike this game because of that. I was, to be honest, a little overwhelmed playing this game. There's so much to do and figure out. It is a collect-a-thon. There are a ton of gadgets to unlock and secrets. This is an above-average platformer and a B. The sequel to one of my favorite Sega Genesis games, Jungle Strike. And they took the success of the first game and continued to not mess with it, adding additional levels, lots of excellent vehicles. You can control some different vehicles in this game. I absolutely love this game. This is the sweet spot of the series, you know, taking the success of the first one and just raising it a notch. I think this is a wonderful game, one of the best on the Sega Genesis. Both Desert Strike and Jungle Strike are an S. This is an S. Totally recommend it. One of the best games that EA released. Lotus 2 Rex is an excellent sequel to an already good racing game. I enjoy this one more as I think it refines a little bit of the gameplay. It's just fun, classic arcade racing. And it kind of takes me back to a more simpler time. This is an excellent racing game. Tons of tracks and courses as well as I felt the, the music in this game really matches kind of the experience. You can also customize your own tracks, which is an additional bonus. This is definitely a solid A for me and one I recommend checking out. I ranked all the Maddens in a previous video. Here's what I said about Madden 94. Madden 94 is bigger and not better, okay? Uh, I, I think though it has 80 teams, okay? Running is a little bit too easy in this game. I found it just too easy and tackling is just a little bit more difficult. And so that kind of takes away from it. Um, you know, for some people, they're gonna like that. Uh, for me, I would prefer 93 over 94. It all depends on what you grew up with, what experiences you had and what you got used to playing. So in my opinion, I think 94 is good. It's a solid B, B is good. And here's the ranking after the first 12 of this video. In my opinion, one of the best classic sports games ever made, and that's Mutant League Football. Taking that success of the Madden games and having a little bit of fun. This is a wonderful game, especially people that aren't really into traditional football. And there's a lot of humor and animation in here. There's 16 different teams. There's crazy wicked plays. There's even like a halftime where you can take out the marching band with TNT. An over-the-top experience and one that I appreciate more now. A total S. Play this game even better. Play it with a friend. You're going to enjoy it. I think many would agree that NHL Hockey 94 is a sweet spot of classic hockey games and one of the best sports games on the Sega Genesis library. Everything about this game is on point. The control, the selection, the options, the teams, the players. There is a lot to appreciate about this. It's the balance of arcade and sim. It's not too sim, uh, the, the, but it's fast and furious. And I like myself some, some arcade style gameplay, and this has it. Uh, there's one timers, there's battery backup, there's new expansion teams of the time. Uh, there is a lot to like in this game, and you must check this out. If you're a hockey fan, one of the best of the era, it's a total S and one I don't think you'll regret playing. Another excellent arcade sports experience, and that's Super Baseball 2020. Now, I played the Neo Geo version of this game, and I thought this translates well on the Sega Genesis. Is it perfect? No. But there's a lot to like about this game. Tons of different teams. You can choose uh, teams made up of males, females, and robots. Lots to enjoy here. Uh, there's power-ups. There's different things that you can customize your team with. Totally check it out, especially if you're kind of a non-sports fan looking for something different. It's an A. 
another overlooked gem on the Genesis, and that's Techno Clash. And if you're a fan of games such as Gauntlet, you may like this game. Now, it is only a single player experience, but there's a lot of complexities to this game. You can choose many different types of weapons and spells. And, you know, I found myself really liking this game. Uh, is it as good as Gauntlet 4 on the Genesis? Absolutely not. But, if you're looking for something different and you like those types of games, there is a lot to like in this game. You uh, can choose from two different characters. There's nine different combat weapons. And, you know, uh, while it's a little rough around the edges, I think that the, the background sometimes can be confusing on where the enemies are. I think many are going to like this game. And this is a B. Tony LaRussa Baseball is an example of a game I remember enjoying more than playing it now and playing other Sega Genesis games on my channel and going back and revisiting some games in my library this one now now falls short uh, the, it's got choppy animation it just doesn't deliver a great baseball experience some may remember this more vividly and fondly than I do stacked up to some of the other baseball games on the Sega Genesis this is currently a D I know that there's some divisive opinions of virtual pinball as I'm a fan of video game pinballs and so I prefer Crewball or the Dragon's Fury on the Sega Genesis but there is a lot to enjoy about this game. Now the graphics are not the best but you can choose from 29 different pre-made fields in this game. You can also make your own fields which is an advantage. This is a follow-up to the pinball construction set computer classic now not my favorite pinball game but there's a lot to like about this and it's a b for me so here's the final ranking and if you like what you see i've done several other ranking videos the link will be below for those you can rank these yourself and there'll be a link below for that thank you so much for continuing to tune into my channel and having a lot of fun doing these ranking videos. They take quite a bit of time, especially larger publishers such as EA, but I enjoy sharing this information with you. So what did you think? What are your stories connected to the games I shared with you today? What are your favorites? Do you have any memories? I'd love to hear the backstories that you have connected to these games as well. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week, different videos, having a lot of fun of covering different things on my channel, doing product reviews, ranking videos, even a bad game series, and that has been very popular. So thank you so much for tuning in. Let's keep it positive. This is the Immortal John Hancock, and you have a good day. The ranking of Electronic Arts continues in 1994, where they released and published 20 different games. And what I'm doing on my channel is looking at classic EA games on the Sega Genesis and ranking them by year. I've done several other ranking videos. You can check them out with the links below. And I've done several other EA years, and you're going to have your favorites. Obviously, by 1994, EA was clearly going in the direction of sports, but there also was some other releases, and I'm going to look at everything that they published in 1994 for the Sega Genesis. If you want to rank these yourself, the link will be below as well. And so, sit back, relax, let's take a look. If you like college football, then you may want to check out Bill Walsh College Football 95, where they improved upon the previous year adding additional plays and I think there is a lot to like here if you're into that sport. If you're a diehard sim sports fan and like the classic 16-bit games this one's for you with that four-player support as well. I like the previous version just as much. They got rid of the passing windows which is a big deal for many people. I like this one on par with the previous version and it's a B for me. Well, maybe soccer is your thing, and FIFA Soccer 95 really improved upon the previous year, and I really like this version of the game. While I like the original first release of FIFA Soccer, it seems like they 
increase the speed and the animations and this one to me plays a lot better i really enjoyed this one quite a bit i'm kind of a casual soccer fan i played it in high school and so i really like what they did here i think it's an excellent year of fifa soccer for the sega genesis it's an a for me ea changed it up with la russa baseball 95 and i didn't like it as a lifelong baseball fan and someone who's played a lot of baseball growing up, I didn't like the behind the pitcher. They were trying to go for like the TV simulation where you see it and it was really difficult to master. There are many other better baseball games on the Sega Genesis and it's a D for me. EA really started pumping out the sports titles and they even released two games Per sport for some, and baseball was a good example. MLBPA Baseball is more of an arcade style baseball game. I love the hitting, I love the graphics, I hate the fielding in this game, and it really kind of ruins a somewhat enjoyable experience, and so it's a C for me. If you're a fan of classics such as pole position or just into these types of racers, you're gonna love Mario Andretti Racing. And there is a lot to like here. It's a great combination of sim and arcade fun. I really enjoyed this racing game. I hadn't had a lot of experience with it. So going back and playing this one, it's a great option for racing fans and a B. And here's what I said about Mad 95 in a previous video. Mad 95 is known to be the one that got rid of the passing windows. And that, the nice thing about that is that you could see the depth of your receivers. It was a little bit easier to pass. Uh, there was two-point conversions. There was better sound. But I just think it looks bad. You know, some people like the animation, but overall... This doesn't look great. New 3D rendered, you know, they, they advertise the graphics being better. Overall, it just to me, uh, just was missing some of what I liked about Madden 94 and definitely missing what I liked about Madden 93. Overall, I'm not a big fan of Madden 95 and that is a C. Yeah, it's just average for me. Even though an average Madden game is still better than most football games on the Sega Genesis. Maybe traditional sports is not your thing. Well, look no further than Mutant League Hockey. I do like hockey games, and I'm a big fan of Mutant League Football, which I rated an S. How does Mutant League Hockey hold up to that? I don't think it's as good. Uh, it's definitely rare and very hard to find these days, but... Uh, you know, for me, I'm going to go with the traditional hockey game as some of the ones that EA published for the Sega Genesis are excellent. This is still a great over-the-top experience, and it's a B. And here's the ranking through the first seven. I'm not going to lie, I wasn't a big fan of the early EA classic basketball games, but I feel that NBA Showdown 94 was one that was going in the right direction of improvements. Most importantly, they sped up the gameplay, which was my biggest complaint of the other ones. While I do feel sometimes the block shots of the computer can be a little bit cheap, this is a good basketball game, and it's a B for me. NBA Live 95, EA went back to the drawing board and completely redesigned their basketball series, and I'm thankful that they did because this is one of the best basketball experiences on the Sega Genesis especially for a full realistic experience they kind of went with like a TV court mode I really love everything that they did in this game the animations the dunks this is one of the best they did for the Sega Genesis and an A for me how do you follow up one of the greatest sports games of all times especially for classic consoles well, you get NHL 95, and unfortunately, EA messed with it too much, changing it up a bit. It's fast. They took out the fighting. There's just something missing from playing this game. I can't put my finger on it, other than the fact that I really prefer NHL 94. I think many others do as well. This is not a bad hockey game. It's definitely above average. It's a B. Maybe Swedish hockey is your thing, and so look no further than Elite Siren 95, which is essentially NHL 95, but with Swedish hockey teams. And so it's not a bad game. It's just the same as NHL 95 with a different environment, and it's a B. 
Normie's Beach Babe Orama is honestly just an average platformer where you are rescuing beach babes from a variety of different time periods. I do like the graphics in this game. They, they definitely pop out. It has nice color for a Sega Genesis game. But unfortunately, the gameplay is just kind of average. I didn't m find myself really enjoying playing this. Uh, uh, more, more importantly, I think there's several other better platformers on the Sega Genesis. Chuck Rock comes to mind. And I just think that this is going to be forgettable. Now, as of a rarity, this game complete in great condition is hard to find. It's a C for me. Honestly, PGA European Tour Golf plays a lot like PGA Tour Golf 2, but I have a lot more experience with that version. But if you're looking for like the European experience and courses and players, then this might be up your alley. For me, I'm going to choose PGA Tour Golf 2 over this, but this is not a bad golf game. A lot of the same gameplay aspects. It's a B. PGA Tour Golf 3 really improved upon many things that people liked about the previous version of this game. It is not a beginner golf game whatsoever though. I like an arcade experience, but if you're looking for like a sim golf game, this is a good golf game. Not my favorite, but I'm still going to give it an A because I think for golfers there's a lot to like in here with many additional features. And here are the rankings through the first 14. I compare Rugby World Cup 95 to reading someone else's mail. I've played a lot of sports in my life, and unfortunately, I'm not too familiar with rugby. Uh, I think this game is okay, and it's going to be better if you're, you know, connected to rugby, like rugby, watch rugby. Uh, the sprites are rather small. There's nice animations, but this game to me is just so-so because I don't have a connection to rugby. I don't go out of my way to play a rugby game. I'm going to prefer a different EA sports game. This is a C. Another EA published oddity and released under the Sega Club line. This is Sesame Street's Counting Cafe. And this is definitely an educational game for young children ages 3 to 6. Now, if you're a fan of Sesame Street and want to introduce your child to a wholesome game that helps them with basic adding, this is a game for you. I think as an educational game, it's just all right and a C. Oh boy! What do you get when you cross a good basketball player, put them in a fighting game? Oh, and as a bonus, you can listen to his rap cd which was bundled in with the first release of this game here we go let's start with a positive i actually think that shaq fu has pretty good graphics and i would even go as far as say it's got some nice animation and that's where the positives of this game stop the gameplay is truly awful hit detection terrible this is one of the worst fighting games on the Sega Genesis. I do not like this game whatsoever. I hate playing it. It's not fun. It's not a good fighting game. You may be a big Shaq fan and you may want to check this out. Otherwise, avoid this. It's a terrible fighting game. Even when you can master the moves, it is just truly unplayable. Avoid it at all costs. A total F. Skitchen is what you get when you cross skating with like a road rash style game. And for some of you out there, this may be the game that you grew up with, played, and loved. I like Skitchen, but I do prefer road rash over this. And so uh, there's various multiple game modes and there's tricks. You get rated on your tricks and how well you uh, jump off ramps and there's lots of things that can hit you you have to avoid cars which constantly hit you it does have a learning curve and the more you play this the better you will get one of the more creative games that ea published and it's a b for me syndicate is more known as a classic pc game but ported to the genesis it's okay now this is a heavily involved action strategy game it has great graphics love the introduction 
and unfortunately some of the controls can get in the way of this excellent game now I still enjoy this game now it's impossible to completely cover the uh, immense strategy and depth this game has in just a 30 minute blur but if you're a fan of those types of games and maybe you're a non-sport fan and like those classic early EA games this one may be for you I do recommend the PC version as it plays better EA concluded the strike series on the Sega Genesis with Urban Strike now I do like this game I don't like it as much as Desert Strike or jungle strike but there is a lot of game here there's 10 huge levels there's all new foot ground levels which weren't my favorite but there is a lot to like in this game especially if you're a fan of the other two strike games now i prefer the other two games over this that doesn't mean this is a bad game it's still an a for me very enjoyable here are the final rankings and what were your favorites? Comment below as I love to hear the backstories that you have connected to these games. I know several are classics to many, many people. For others, this might have not been your favorite year, but that's okay. I'm going to continue to cover every EA game released for Sega Genesis, and I'm going to continue to do these ranking videos as I have many of them in my collection. And if you're new to the channel and like what you see, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the Immortal John Hancock, and you have a good day. Electronic Arts published over 100 games for the Sega Genesis, and in today's video, I'm looking at the games that they published in 1995. They did a lot of different types of games, and as many companies stopped publishing for the Sega Genesis in the mid-90s, EA continued as it was very profitable for them. And so I've done several of these ranking videos on my channel. The link is going to be below for the several ones that I did for EA. And, you know, I'm having a lot of fun doing these, covering many games that most other people wouldn't cover. I love the Sega Genesis, and that's why I'm covering so many games, as it is the console that I grew up with, and I'm very passionate about Sega. So, if you want to rank these yourself, there'll also be a link below as well. We're looking at all the 13 games that EA released in 95. They were starting to wind down what they were covering and offering for the Sega Genesis, but there are going to be a few surprises and I know there's going to be a few favorites out there that you're going to be excited to see. So sit back, relax, you may want to grab some popcorn, let's take a look. The first game I'm showing is a Mega Drive exclusive that we didn't get here in the States and a follow-up to Rugby World Cup 1995 offered a multitude of options, 44 teams, 20 Australian Rugby League teams, and 11 English teams. How does this fare to the previous Rugby World Cup 95? The sprites are bigger. I do think it is well animated, but I think it runs slower. Now, if you're a rugby fan, you may give this a higher grade. For me, it's just an average sports game. I'm not into rugby. I kind of talked about that last video. This is a C for me. Well, maybe college basketball is your thing. Look no further than Coach K College Basketball, taking the success from NBA live 95 and using i think the same engine you got this and this is a wonderful college basketball game it offers both sim and arcade gaming experience i really enjoy this now i'm more of an arcade game fan but there's lots of options here awesome animation great dunks different plays this is wonderful this is one of the best college basketball games of the era I really enjoyed playing this. This is an A for me. College Football 96 offers and continues to add additional things to make this a more realistic football game. But how is it as a video game? Well, I think it kind of misses the mark. I'm a bigger fan of the previous college football games, Bill Walsh and Bill Walsh 95. This one is just kind of lacking some personality. I, I just think that uh, some things come across as kind of generic. Uh, you may be a fan of this. For me, it was just an average college football game. It's a C. 
By the mid-90s, FIFA soccer was huge around the world, and FIFA 96 kind of redesigns the game with different graphics, more features, and for me, it is not as good as FIFA 95. Now, some people may like more of the realism. They, they added all these additional animations. I didn't care about any of that. I think this is a B. I think it's a solid entry into the series, but there's others that are my favorite. Here's what I said in a previous video about Madden 96. It has great sound, better fields, faster gameplay. Some people think it's too fast. I think it's okay. Um, it has end zone insignias of the teams. I think they did a lot right with Madden 96. In fact, of some of the later Madden games, I think it's one of the better ones. Um, the graphics still don't do for me. I don't know what it is. There is a free agency. You can create a player. There's lots of additional features for that. But Mad 96 is a B. Some people aren't going to like that gameplay. I think it's a little bit too tough, but a little, a little too fast. But for me, uh, I think it's way better than Mad 95. So definitely, definitely solid B there. EA continued its tradition of marginal updates with many sports games, and that's what I have to say about NBA Live 96. Now, I'm a big fan of NBA Live 95, and this one, to me, just is slightly missing the mark. Now, it's still a great basketball game, don't get me wrong. It includes the expansion teams of the time, Toronto and Vancouver. It has additional dunks and moves, but... For me, I'm going to prefer NBA Live 95 as I think it animates just a little bit differently and better. Uh, you know, there's a lot to like here as a basketball game. I think it's a solid choice, especially for the Sega Genesis. It's a B. It seemed that EA really understood hockey. It was one of the better sports franchises that they developed games for, and I really enjoyed NHL 96. It's a perfect blend of speed and and control there's many options here for hockey fans but if you just want to play like an arcade style hockey game this is a wonderful option as well now still nhl 94 is like the top tier s but there's a lot to like in nhl 96 they kind of improved the animations and moves and it improved upon nhl 95 i think this is one of the better games that they released for the sega genesis and it's an a for me and here's the ranking through the first seven. Well, maybe Swedish hockey is your thing. Well, you're in luck. They took the wonderful game NHL 96 and adapted it to the Swedish Hockey League. And this is a great game. And so, you know, I'm not really into Swedish hockey, but it doesn't really matter because the game is awesome. It's hockey. It's great. It's fun. Arcade Fast and Furious with many of the realistic options for those that want to relive the glory years of that hockey era. And look no further than this. This is a total A and a cool sports oddity to track down. Like many other companies, by the mid-90s, EA was moving towards more realism and sometimes a dirty word, 3D. And unfortunately, PGA Tour Golf 96 is just really pushing the hardware limitations of the Sega Genesis. It takes several seconds for courses to load. I didn't like the putting. Uh, you know, this is just not a good golf game. Go with PGA Tour Golf 2 or 3 or even European Tour as this is the one that they totally missed the mark with as I didn't like it. I really dislike the putting in this version. It just is not accurate. It's not fun. Avoid it. It's a D. While Road Rash 3 looks different than its predecessors, it still offers the same arcade fun experience that I enjoyed with the previous two. Now, some people may not like the digitized look of graphics, but it still plays awesome. I love this series. This is a series kind of like the Strike series for the Sega Genesis. EA didn't mess with it too much. They offered some new tracks, some new weapons, some new courses, and it is still a lot of fun to play. Highly recommend it. One or two player. Uh, I really enjoy this series in general, and I like three just as much as I like two or one. If you're looking for something a little more non-traditional, then Road Rash 3 is for you, and it's a total A for me. 
when I first saw that Theme Park was actually released for the Sega Genesis, I was excited as this is a PC and Amiga classic. I know it's on several other platforms, but boy, does this not work for me and it comes down to control. I did not enjoy utilizing the menus with the controller or moving it around. This game needs to have different control options. I'm surprised they didn't offer a Sega mouse option. Play this on other consoles and handhelds that offer different controls, stylus or a mouse, but avoid this version, it's a total F. An often overlooked boxing game for the Sega Genesis, you got Tough Men Contest, also made for the 32X. Multitude of different boxers and it has excellent graphics. Now, to me, you're probably wondering, wow, this kind of looks like a Punch-Out arcade game. Yes, it plays close to that, but I think Punch Out is a much better game. This to me is just an average boxing game. It's a C for me. Another great marriage of realism, but still does not forget it's a video game, and that's Triple Play 96. I do believe this is above average baseball game with a multitude of options and customizations, including battery save. This is a great realistic baseball game for the mid 90s for the Sega Genesis it's a B for me so here's the final rankings and what was your favorite of what I showed today now you may not be into sports games and that's okay but if you are a physical collector there are several affordable games that I showed today that you can pick up rather cheap and you can probably find these locally several of these games still have lots of value to them and so I look forward to continuing and finishing up EA. As a reminder, I've done several other ranking videos. You can check those out in the links below. And if you're new to the channel, you may well consider hitting that like and subscribe button and clicking the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. Let's keep it positive. This is the immortal John Hancock, and you have a good day. Electronic Arts published over a hundred games for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive and in today's video I'm taking a look at the final years that they released games for the Genesis 1996 and 1997. I'm having a lot of fun doing these ranking videos on my channel and I've taken a look at Electronic Arts and broken their releases down by years. This is the final part six of that series and I'm concluding it by looking at the final 10 games that they published for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. And if you wanna see the other videos, the link will be below. If you wanna rank these yourself, you can do that as well. In the twilight years of the Sega Genesis, EA was still continuing to release games for the platform. And as you can see, they are sports titles. And some of them are great, and some of them not so much. So in today's video, I'm gonna take a look at each one of these games, go back and revisit these games to see if they hold up or should you pass. So sit back, relax, you may wanna grab some popcorn. Let's take a look. The last college football game released by EA on the Sega Genesis, you have College Football USA 97. Now, is this a bad game? No. The biggest feature that it includes is the one where you can create yourself as a walk-on. Now, some people are going to really love that feature. And there's tons of things to make this game realistic. But when it comes down to gameplay, I thought it was a little slow. I preferred the previous games, especially the Bill Walsh games for college football on the Sega Genesis. Now you may like the extra features, but this one is pretty close to the previous year. And I'm just gonna give this a C. EA knew they had a huge hit with the FIFA series and they continued it with FIFA 97 Gold Edition only called Gold Edition on the title screen, not on the cover or anything. And what's great about this game is it's a perfect blend of offering lots of realistic soccer options, as well as if you just want to pick up and play and play an arcade style soccer game, you got that as well. I love this version of the game. I think it's excellent. It has a ton of really neat options. It has over 12 international leagues, 255 teams, 
over 4,000 players, has new action, new sights, new sounds, new modes from the previous year. This one is really good. Is it the best FIFA on the Sega Genesis? That could be debated, but I really enjoyed what I played here. This is an excellent option, and it's an A for me. And here's what I said about Mad 97 from a previous video. You can see that some of the resources are being used for, for, for some of the other next-gen teams. You know, for me, uh, the player fatigue, um, you know, the, there was more options. But for me, 97 is a good example. It was way more sim and slower gameplay. I was not a fan of that. It took away, you know, they took away some of that speed from 96. I think they were trying to accommodate and make it slower. And, and if you're more of a sim Madden fan, you're going to love John Madden 97. Now, there's 500 redesigned Madden plays. There's advanced personnel management. There's player sets. There's player fatigue. That's really cool. Custom leagues and tournaments, you know, but the graphics don't do it for me at all. And if you're really into those details of football, and less of like the gameplay and arcade feel. Mad 97 is going to be your thing. For me, it's a C. NBA Live 97 continued to tweak the previous years. And is it better? No, but it's not broken. This is still an excellent basketball game with different animations. They tried to speed up the gameplay a little bit. There's manual steals in this version. And, you know, I, I don't know. NBA Live 95 is still my favorite. But this is a good basketball game. One kind of strange thing about this game is they took away the benches on the sidelines. I don't know if they had to do that to cram in all the extra features. But that's kind of weird. If you're looking for a good basketball game, this is a decent year. But I think NBA Live 95 is still my favorite. A solid pickup if you can find this cheap. And it's a B. They didn't change much with NHL 97, and that's actually a good thing, even though some will say it's a lazy upgrade. They added new signature moves, but really this is pretty close to NHL 96. That's not bad. NHL 96 was a great hockey game, and they continued the series with fast and furious action, but it has all the sim stuff if you want to have a more realistic hockey game. I really like the sounds in this game. The gameplay is fast. This is an excellent choice, especially if you can find it affordably, if you want to go the physical cart collecting route. But if you're just looking for a good hockey game, this is a good year. And I like it just like NHL 96, and it's an A as well. For classic sports franchises for the Sega Genesis, EA Hockey Series was one of my favorites. Triple Play Gold is mostly just a roster update from the previous year and that's not necessarily a bad thing because the previous year was a pretty good baseball game it's not my favorite baseball game I think there's other Sega Genesis baseball games that I would prefer but it is above average it has lots of great sound and graphics I like the announcer I like the sound of the crack of the bat when you hit it into the outfield I don't think the fielding is that great but it does have some decent animations and it definitely is kind of a nice blend of simulation and arcade gaming. Only a few new features including a pro mode and new pitching control interface. This is like the previous year. I'm going to give this a B. A solid baseball gaming experience and four player support. Check it out. FIFA 98 was not released here in the United States and it was the final European Mega Drive game that EA released. And what do I think of it? It's a minor update, and they kind of cut some corners to add some additional features in this game. Uh, some have said that the animation is less. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was okay. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the FIFA series, so even, even a, an okay FIFA game is still better than most other soccer games on the Sega Genesis. This one wasn't my favorite. For some reason, it just didn't have the feel of FIFA 97, even though it is a minor update. Uh, there is some character creation options in this game, as well as create your own team. Tons and tons of leagues and different uh, countries to play. I like this game. I think it's a solid soccer release, especially you know in 1997, one of the final releases. You know, EA is still carrying on and supporting the Sega Genesis. It's a B.
Here's what I said in a previous video about the final Madden release on the Sega Genesis. Um, I didn't like the slow gameplay of either 97 or 98. And the, the, the big thing with this version is there's two minute quarters. I wish there was two minute quarters in previous versions of the John Madden series games. Uh, I think that having those fast games, but I'm kind of an arcade style player anyways, you know, that's not realistic. And so Madden really at this point was really trying to be more of a sim style game. It had enhanced computer AI, uh, the team hot and cold streaks, replay of the last 10 Super Bowls. That's cool. The replay of the last 10 Super Bowls is neat. But to me, uh, you know, the updated logos and uniforms and there's three difficulty levels. All that to me doesn't matter because when it came down to it, this was kind of a slow mess and not my greatest Madden at all. And so I'm gonna give this a C. On one hand, NBA Live 98 is a mediocre at best update to the previous year. But if you look at it this way, at least they were still supporting the Sega Genesis in 1997. It was one of the final for releases that they did for the Sega Genesis. And this one's all right. It's a lot like the previous year. There's a couple new features. There's team and player practice modes, and there's a training mode incorporating player ratings, as well as a mid-season CPU generated all-star game. Like the previous year, it's a B for me. Of the final releases, for the Sega Genesis, I thought that EA ended with a bang with NHL 98. And there was a couple new features from the previous release in 97. And, you know, they had three different game speeds. I love that feature. Enhanced computer AI, player hot and cold streaks, automatic goalie switching, updated team rosters and player ratings, enhanced penalty awareness, more intelligent crowd, but you know, all that, all that's great. You know, there's additional features, but when it came down to it, it had the same excellent gameplay as the previous release. This is an excellent hockey option for people looking for a good Sega Genesis game, and it's an A for me. Here's the final rankings. And what did you think? What was your favorite year that EA published games. The links will be below to all the other videos that I did on EA on this series. I've had a lot of fun doing this and I want to say thank you for the ongoing support. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I'm uploading videos every week. I'm doing a lot of different content. I'm doing a bad game series. I'm going to continue to do ranking videos as well as cover aftermarket homebrew games that come out for various retro gaming consoles, computers, and handhelds. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is the Immortal John Hancock, and you have a good day.